Okay. All right, it's recording, right? Yeah. <laughs> All right, welcome back to our second installment of After the Funeral. And as you can see from my copy, Pittsburgh Library finally came through. Wow. Took them long enough. <laughs> I like your tabs. Thank you. I have a lot of tabs, like, but I feel like they're all clustered at the very beginning of the book. And then I'm like finding less and less things to tab. So it's bothering me. I feel the same way. I think I've got like the same two clues. Yeah, you just get like all the clues thrown at you in the beginning. So <laughs> we have, do we have any more suspects? Yes. And now I'm okay. forgetting his name. But um, the one I'm thinking of is when Susan and Mrs. Gilchrist are at the cottage. That guy shows up who was yeah, like a dealer. friend of Cora. Yeah. I don't remember what his name was. I don't either, but I have him written down. Art dealer could have dropped the cake. Yes. Because what happened is um, Mrs. Gilchrist was poisoned with arsenic in a cake that was left at her like left by the post maybe maybe somebody pretending to leave it by the post but she didn't eat the whole thing so it didn't kill her yeah yeah that was like a big thing that happened yep. somebody's trying to kill her now and the whole wedding cake thing as soon as she opened up the thing and got the wedding cake I was scared for her me too I was like, why would you do that? Why are you eating that cake? You don't know who gave me. You don't know who that's from. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I, he is definitely a suspect, whatever that art dealer is. But George looks really guilty to me. I agree. His alibi was a lie. Yeah. And it was a lie. Here's the thing that kind of bothered me about his alibi was that he made it up beforehand because he made he picked two horses that would probably win. He didn't make it up afterwards. So it's almost like he knew he needed to cover his tracks for that period of time. Mm -hmm. He was or ready for that whole day. Yes. So yeah. like he's definitely up to something shady. Mm -hmm. And the question is what? And does it have anything to do with the murder? Yeah. Yeah. Because I, I, why would he have that alibi prepared beforehand? And then it was so easily disputed by the lawyer. So yeah, he was definitely under, up on, up to something shady. I agree. Yes. Um, and then the other thing is that he's the first one Richard visited. Yes. So it's almost like he was going to be the heir, maybe? I think that was the original intention because he's like the male nephew and that something must not have gone well in that meeting. Mm -hmm. and that, so maybe he's upset because he expected to be the heir. And, and maybe that's why he potentially killed Richard. Yeah. And that brings me to the third thing was that I thought was shady about him was he said when he came to visit Susan and found out that Mrs. Miss Gilchrist had been poisoned, he said, Uncle Richard, then maybe Uncle Richard was not mistaken. And I looked back through and I don't see where the lawyer told George that oh, Richard yeah. thought he was being poisoned. That is a very good point. It was like a slip up. Yes. Like he should not know that. Yeah. I thought that was a little. That's very shady. Shady. Yep. I really like Susan. Yeah, I like her. She seems good. Yeah. Um, somebody else that seemed a little bit shady to me for one reason is Timothy. Because apparently he can move around very well if he wants to. So you yeah. kind of think of him as not being an option because he's wheelchair bound, but he's really not. He can move. <laughs> and his wife, Maud, is described as being very strong. So I thought mm -hmm. like, you know, potentially 
she could have done the hatchet job. Yeah. So. And plus her car broke down in a village going home the next day, which was the day that Cora was murdered. Mm-hmm. So she doesn't really have a very strong alibi either. And like yeah, you said, so. she's pretty strong. Like she was cranking the engine of the car. So they seem a little shady. Yeah. To me. yeah. Um, I have a kind of out there theory though. Oh, that I, I just like wanted to throw out there. And it's only the beginnings of a theory. I, um, I don't know what this means. Okay. But I think that Cora is an imposter. I don't think she's Cora. And let me explain oh why. God. I explain. So, um, I forget who was talking to Helen, but Helen said something about how something felt off to her after the funeral when they were all gathered together that something felt off Mm -hmm. and I remembered something that Poirot had been asking Mr. Entwistle he was kind of asking like is Cora how you remembered her and I was I didn't really understand what Poirot was trying to get at when he was asking that but it it made me kind of like start thinking along the lines of maybe it's not Cora So I went back and I found something very interesting. So in the chapters after they all leave um, to go home after the funeral, it's one of those chapters where it's broken up into a bunch of different sections and each section is following different characters as they're traveling home. Mm -hmm. And as the chapter opens up for each one, it identifies the character by name except for Cora's chapter oh my gosh he is not identified by name it just opens up and says meanwhile in the buffet at Swindon a lady in wispy morning and festoons of jet was eating bath buns and drinking tea and looking forward to the future I think never names her as Cora no you just I think you you identified as Cora because she's thinking about how she said about Richard being murdered so that's why you put put it together that she's Cora but that she never identifies her that way and that's just really weird to me gosh yes that is weird I think you just that's a big huge that's a big huge discovery and so like I I noticed that there are like a lot of mentions of how people have not seen her in years Mm -hmm. like most of the family has not seen her since she was young and they're talking about how she has changed in appearance she's heavier um they, they mentioned that her mannerisms are the same which is interesting yeah but they think she looks different mm-hmm. and I feel like that's why Helen felt like something was wrong and like yeah. I think Timothy the brother might be the only one who would realize that it's not her but he wasn't there yeah I think that's oh, I and you know what and Helen is the one that was like something seems wrong and she's looking at the flowers and isn't there an earlier part where Cora is looking at the flowers, where is they there? make a big deal about Cora looking at the flowers? So I feel like that's ringing a bell. Yeah, and Helen's like, "Hmm, something's wrong." And it's when she was looking at the flower, the wax flower. So maybe that's what she's thinking is wrong. And I just like, I don't know why, and then why she would be murdered. But another thing was, there was mention that Richard had spoken of setting a trap for somebody and I wonder if like somehow he was setting a trap for this imposter woman like I don't know I'm having trouble making sense of it but I just thought it was really weird that she's not identified in that chapter by name and that like people haven't seen her in a long time yeah oh and I also I have a theory of who the imposter is because if you remember Mr. Entwistle is remembering a time way back in the day when Cora basically got one of the maids fired because she like mentioned like her stomach was growing and it talks about how they kind of like her and the gardener they paid for a cottage for her and the garden and gardener to live in and like she stopped working for them yeah and 
it's also interesting. They said they bought them a cottage and Cora's house is a cottage. It's always referred to as a cottage. And um, so I'm wondering if maybe that maid is somehow like the imposter, but then when they recognize her, I don't know. It could be. And you know what? We don't know who the mom is of Richard's son, Mortimer. That's true. So I'm wondering if the maid was, if Richard somehow is the father of the uh, maid's child. And because all they say is they paid a gardener to marry her. And maybe, I don't know. That would be very interesting. Yeah. But then how would Richard come up with, but then why would he have the son though? That doesn't make sense actually, does it? Why he would what? Why he would then be raising the son. That actually doesn't make sense. But we still don't know who the mom is of, Rick, of Mortimer. Right. Of Rick. Yeah. We still don't know what that whole story is. At one point I was wondering if maybe um, Susan was the daughter of this maid because Cora left everything to Susan and it was explained uh, because she like understands what she went through marrying somebody that the family doesn't approve of but what if somehow there's some sort of relation there with Susan and like he keep, yes that's good because he keeps saying how much Susan is like Richard yeah so maybe this is Richard yeah Oh, no, wait a minute. But Susan is definitely the daughter of, Susan's the daughter of this beef sister. Yeah, it's actually, okay. So I'm back to not. Well, I'm like, still, I just, I'm still honestly, very confused why Richard doesn't have a wife, why there's no woman. Yeah, that's a good question. Yeah, that still gets me. But I think you're right. Cora is definitely an imposter. We just have to figure out what's going on. Yeah. And like, and is this like, Gilchrist like, involved? Yeah. I like the fact that it's like the, the maid. I think I'm, I'm going to look into that more. I'm going to definitely go yeah, back. Yeah, I need it. help like piecing it together in a way that makes sense. Yeah. That's what I'm struggling with. Yep. I like that. Yeah. So <laughs> as we read the next, is it the next six chapters? Oh. All right, I'm, I am, and I'm going to go back and look through that again. So what is our next, our next chunk is 12 through 17? Yeah. Okay. I'm Let's excited. Where he's going. I know. <laughs> All right, so our next um, installment, read chapters 12 through 17. So far, we've got George seems shady. Maud and Timothy, definitely shady. And Cora, clearly an imposter, but we don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so make sure that you like and subscribe and put your comments, your guesses in also. See ya. Bye.